Okay, everybody, the uh, market just closed, the regular session did at least, a few minutes ago, and uh, I wanted to reflect upon the day. Um, some of these charts I actually haven't seen for hours, so you'll get the real-time reaction. Won't that be exciting? Um, but I, I, it was an important day, and I felt it was worth a video. So let's get going. Here, of course, is the ES, and it is fascinating because, as you well know, uh, after the CPI came out, we had this explosive move higher. It lasted one, two, three, four, five, six minutes. And after six minutes, it came within just spinning distance of the Fibonacci resistance line. And because God is merciful, the thing sold off. And it did so in this sort of scalloped fashion, down, down, down it goes. It bottomed here. And then, since the bulls were vexed, they looked for the next ridiculous reason to buy stocks. So they're like, oh, the Fed minutes are coming out. That'll be good news, I'm sure. So they started bidding things up again. Fed minutes, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Fed minutes, oh boy, 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 boy. Jerome Powell's our friend, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. The Fed minutes came out. Obviously not the reaction that this had, but it, it after a little bit of wiggling, it started to strengthen a bit, reached its counter trend peak, and then vomited all over its lapels. And so down it goes. So it closed pretty near the lows of the day. As of this moment, it's down 18 on the ES. And as I say, the respect that it showed for that descending trend line is just fantastic. I mean, just bang, 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 almost bang, and then bang here. And more importantly, the respect that is shown for this Fibonacci is just sensational. We actually got higher today than we did um, back here, um, which was last week. But we never crossed above the 4186.56 level. And that is just very exciting news because not only did the bulls get all this great news for themselves, but they completely muffed it. And after all that good news on the bullish side, we are way the hell up here. So if you consider this range to be important, which it has been for months and months and months, down, up, down, up, down, up, then we have hundreds of points to play with. I also think working to the bear's advantage is that you know they have stalled and stalled and stalled and stalled and stalled the organic collapse of this market for decades or years at least and it's at some point it's going to crush them you know maybe it'll be the horrible earnings season i don't know but uh, even though there's like one bear for every fifty thousand bulls i think the bears could be at a tremendously positive spot right here um looking at the nq uh, this one has been weaker. As I said yesterday, not nearly as clean uh, a chart as the ES, but uh, it's still nice looking. It just while I'm on the subject of tech stocks, Tesla, um, which I acquired puts on earlier today again, um, is starting to break down nicely. This has been very, very strong resistance. And we've got this funny little pattern going on here where it's monkeying around with this 185.43 level in its own little sine wave as well, but we're below that too. Uh, if you look farther out, you can see this is, to, to say this is vulnerable to a fall is a tremendous understatement. I mean, just look at this thing, you know, d does that look safe? And to me, it looks horrifying. So um, that's an interesting credit right there. It's gonna kind of randomly bang on different stuff here. Um, gold had a okay day. It was up about $10. Uh, it had a, initially had a tremendous positive reaction. It lost all of that and then some, and then sort of righted itself and ended up the day modestly higher. So it's still above that psychologically important $2,000 level. Uh, as for Bitcoin, uh, it seems to have kind of dropped the ball here. Uh, it, it approached 31,000, but now we're below the all important big round number. And mind you, these are futures, so this is higher than the cash price but we're below the 30,000 level on both uh, the spot and the, uh, the futures. So that's sort of interesting. So um, anyway, I am massively relieved the day is over because this was a very worrisome day. Um, as we look at the VIX here, we're still in the teens, which again, I think speaks of great opportunity for a, a lift higher, you know, because 
the uh, those with a vested interest in painting the world as a sunny, perfect place, which is basically everybody, has told their story. And you know, it is. I will just pick on Zero Hedge again and say that whereas Zero Hedge made me look bullish for years, I mean, they were always like on the mega perma bear side. Something happened last year. I don't know if they had a change in management or, or, or Goldman Sachs took them over or what, but they have completely changed their tune. And they might as well just hand the whole site over to Goldman Sachs because all they do is post bullish articles that begin with Goldman, tracks, Goldman Sachs trader says, and they just fill in the blanks. So, I mean, Zero Hedge has become more bullish than Yahoo Finance and Investor's Business Daily and uh, Motley Fool and all the rest of them. So there, there's really no big bear site left anymore. It used to be Zero Hedge. They're gone now. They, they switch sides. So I'm afraid of all you got. Um, but it is odd, very odd to me and encouraging in a way, because since they were bearish from 2009 through 2021, you know, maybe that's a good thing. They've become permables. Well, I've got no charts to talk about beyond these. Uh, I'm just very relieved at how the day went. I uh, have gone from 25% cash to 6.8. And if things keep going nicely tomorrow, I'll just deploy the rest of it. Hope you had a good day too. See you later.